Hey guys, Mr. Hosey here. Just wanted to announce that we will be live streaming TCO match between Sozin and Luke Crosby at 9 p.m. Eastern. And I think we're live. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Welcome to a Monday Night X-Wing, which, of course, it's Friday night. And we're showing our first ever uh, Vassal team game here for the TCO, the Team Covenant Open. And it looks like Luke has initiative right now, and he set up his Echo and his Rear Admiral list for this matchup, as well as... Um, He's going to be on your right hand side there. And, sorry, left hand side. And we have Sozin on the right hand side running his Dash Rendar and Corrin Horn list. Um, I believe the lists are called 
Admiral's Echo for Luke, and for Rendar, I think it's Escape from Luskatania or something. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But uh, we'll go over the lists real quick as we're as their players is getting ready to set up right now. Um, I believe it is going to be uh, a 100 versus 99 list. So, like I said, Luke will have initiative, and he will be uh, needing that initiative to be able. Sorry, he he'll be handing over initiative over to Silzen, so he'll be able to uh, know where he is and move out of the way, even though he gets to shoot last, especially against uh, Koran Horn there, who can who can do the double tap for everybody. Uh, we're right into asteroid placement now, and it looks like they're both setting. He set a big a big asteroid in the middle. Now with let's speak about Sozin's list a little bit. He has Dash Rendar, who can ignore obstacles during activation phase and when performing actions. So this allows him to boost barrel roll uh, through asteroids and debris fields. He really likes debris fields since he can land on one and still be able to shoot and not receive distress. Um, he's equipped with the Outrider and heavy laser cannons, which gives him the secondary weapon ability at 360. So his only catch with that is that the he can't use his primary weapon. So he's at um, he has a blind spot at range one. So that's I think Luke will be able to um, exploit that with his list. He also has push to limit engine upgrades to allow him to get out of range one of any of of Luke's ships, and that way he'll be able to barrel roll boost and remain at range two to three to be able to shoot his heavy laser cannons. From 360, and he has the Numb as his passenger to allow for, um, you know, the green maneuvers for the straight. Koran Horn is running R2D2 push to limit and fire control system. So basically, Koran is going to be um, either heavy attack or heavy evade. I'm assuming, um, either pushing the limit for an evade focus or pushing the limit for a focus target lock, and he'll be able to um, unleash some some damage on anybody in his sights shooting twice with his double tap uh, limiting his ability to shoot the next round. On the other side of the map we have Admiral's Echoes so Echo and Rear Admiral um, are going to be the ships and um, with Echo he's equipped with the advanced cloaking device which allows him to recloak after he shoots um, fire control system, acquire target lock after he shoots as well as Vet Instincts to boost him up to an 8. Echo is usually uh, 6. And Echo's special ability, he has to use the 2 bank when he decloaks. Um, I'm really impressed with Echo's ability. He's, he's a high skill cap ship to fly, so if you're able to maneuver him really well, you'll be in good shape. And it's I think the, those Echo with those upgrades are the best 37 points in the game, in my opinion, especially if you're able to fly him really well. And he also has Rear Admiral, which is in the Decimator. And he has the Engine Upgrades Gunner uh, Ruthlessness, which will uh, help him get into range with the Engine Upgrade, and Gunner will guarantee a hit. With Ruthlessness, that allows another ship at range one of the target to suffer damage. Um, really good ship to, really good upgrade to use against, say, a Swarm or anybody who's flying in some sort of formation. And this, with the Rear Admiral's ability, he doesn't really need to take a focus since he can convert focus to crits. So Luke will be praying for a lot of focuses. And of course, Yisan Isard to give him an evade once he starts taking damage. Um, the Decimator really needs that in order to avoid taking damage, basically. It's, it's one of the best upgrades, one of the best crew members for that ship. So here we see um, the two players lining up. Sozin has set up his ships, spread apart, worried about ruthlessness, and uh, I'm not sure how Luke will respond to this. Luke wants to probably focus his fire on one ship and stay out of the arcs with Echo, because if Echo leaves, that's basically all his damage gone, and it's just a catch-up game for Sozin. The match will be a 100 point 
uh, match. I don't think they have a time limit. Um, I'll give them a quick ask. And then we'll be able to set up uh, a timer for us. So it doesn't look like they have a time limit. So what we'll do is we'll just set up an online stopwatch to um, to start it up. Get that going on my screen here, and hopefully it displays for you guys. It looks like Lucas is setting up on the bottom side with his decimator. I want to see where Echo goes because that'll be a huge um, setup for him because Echo, ne Echo needs to be safe. If Echo is not safe, then we have a problem. He will have a problem. Yeah, I'm just I'm just setting up the uh, stopwatch right now, so we'll, we'll be able to uh, keep track of time. And if we want to go back to review some some attacks, we'll be able to uh, take a look at it. Move that stopwatch to the bottom corner. Go ahead. And now we're entering turn one. The GGs go up from both players. Good luck, have fun. So, right now, what um, Sozin wants to do on the left hand side of your screen is remain at range one. Sorry, remain out of range one of both of his ships in order for him to get. Um, some hit, some hits off with his heavy laser cannons, because right now his heavy laser cannons have limited his uh, YT to a range two three. So if Luke wants to survive, he has to stay within range one of that YT, which will take a lot uh, a lot of good movement for him to do. For Koran Horn, he wants to either use him as a distraction or as a threat. So depending on what Luke is going to do. Sozin is going to be able to utilize Koran Horn, but it looks like um, Echo's Admiral, um, Admiral's Echo wants to head out and uh, probably joust with Koran. So I'm anticipating Koran Horn to uh, kind of stall a little bit down here and be able to uh, get back up from Dash. So Dash three banks and heads into the fray. Obviously, that was, you know, we, we expected that to happen since he needs to stay at range 3, so he takes focus, does not push the limit. And Koran Horn moves one forward and focuses. Now, Koran does have R2D2 to be able to regenerate Dill Shields, so if he does turtle up with his focus evades, he'll be able um, to survive for a bit. We see the 4 forward on the dial for the decimator. I don't think they'll be in range of each other for these first shots. I don't see engine upgrades into there, but I don't see him doing that on the very first turn. Echo on the other hand is in a very precarious situation because he needs to stay out of range 3 of, of dash, but at the same time be able to hit Koran. It's a very tough, tough list to play against each other, but I think I'm going to have to give it to the, um, the Echo list if he's able to fly Echo properly. If Echo flies properly, he'll be able to stay out of arcs of Koran, be able to stay out of range of Dash, and be able to finish off ships really fast. Echo cloaks right behind the rear admiral 
I don't think anybody has any shots, so we'll probably go back to dials again. Just asking the players to uh, place the dials closer to the middle of the board. Bear with us, guys. This is our first attempt at uh, live casting. So we're going to be trying to uh, set up as best as possible. And uh, I'm also really excited to, to be able to live show this match as well as um, I have a few special things to show. Um, the, hit, the hit points will be able to go down. The... Hopefully in the future I'll be able to show some actions, but if you guys are watching on YouTube or watching on um, Twitch, just let me know. Uh, any comments, suggestions, recommendations, critiques are welcome at this point because I want to make this um, work as best as possible for you guys so we'll be able to broadcast more frequently and more games. And also uh, with, a, with a test rig setup that I have, I want to be able to take this on the road and actually be able to show um, live matches online. So broadcast Twitch matches online. We're just waiting for the players to uh, get into this turn two which I think is when all the action is going to happen. I'm excited to see what these players have for us here. <clears throat> Looks like Sozin is ready for his movements. Just waiting on Luke. And I have a feeling Dash will will stay around this area. With a barrel roll and a boost, he'll be able to, to maneuver wherever he needs to be in this in this general vicinity. Corando is in a lot of trouble. Because Echo can uncloak this way and stay down in this area at the bottom of the map to be able to uh to show. So Dash shows his one forward, and I believe he'll be focusing, thinking about pushing the limit to to do something. I'm not sure what he can do. Uh, unfortunately, we can't see if he's within range to target lock or not, but uh, he'll think about uh, pushing the limit. Hopefully, you guys can see the text on all on all the cards well well enough. Now with Ruthlessness, Solzhen wants to keep his ships apart just because the Rear Admiral will get free pot shots on on each ship. Um, really strong card, really new, good strong upgrade for the Imperials, I think, with the Ruthlessness. You'll, we're going to see Gunner Ruthlessness com combinations on a lot of ships to uh, to counter any Imperial Swarm. Sozin is checking for target lock on Echo. Looks like he's out of range, but he'll looks like he's range three to the Imperial Decimator. And as you can see from from the overlay here, uh, the Imperial players most of his points are in Rear Admiral. However, with the Rebel player, he has his points are fairly well spread out. With Corin Horn having 56 points, so Corin is a little expensive ship. So he pushed the limit, target locked on Cher. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Churn, Churnil, Churnil, Churnil. I really hope the audio levels are, are good. 
and that um, you guys are able to listen in at what I'm saying and what I'm saying actually makes sense. Hopefully there's no lag and there's no cutting out of my audio. So we see the rear admiral going forward, four forward, getting into range one of Koran because he does want Koran to uh, to die early. But as as you can see, Koran has turtled up with his focus and dodge. Sorry, evade actions. Contemplating his actions on the decimator, Luke. Not sure if he'll take a focus or a target lock. Or even an engine, a, a boost out, a boost out might put him out of range. These large ships move really well, but we'll see. But now that he knows where Dash is, he'll be able to probably move with Echo and come around. Probably end up at the bottom corner of it, uh, at the bottom half of your screen there. Now with Echo, um, I think again he's one of the best ships in the game if you have really good spatial sense and are able to move him well, keep him out of arcs. That two bank is huge. It can can be used for many tricky maneuvers, and putting advanced cloaking device and vet instincts ensures that he shoots fairly high up and then stays safe even if he is in arcs and if you're still in arcs you'll be able to just take a dodge action an evade action Lucas considering his actions here he's gonna have shots on both ships on both ships but I don't think oh there it is there's the boost taking him out of arcs fantastic move Cherno will be safe and he'll be shot at by dash but through so he'll get range 3 of course heavy laser cannons no no range modifiers but um, he'll be able to focus uh, sorry he'll be able to at least get one evade dice through the asteroid to avoid damage from the heavy laser cannons <laughs> but now he's at range 1 of Koran, who is going to take a lot of hurt this turn. It'll be an interesting result. Now we usually do have a co-host, Marky Mark, Marcus, hosting with me, but unfortunately he was unavailable today. And he also doesn't know how to use Vassal yet, so I still have to have to teach him how to do that. Um, there's also an issue with um, getting more broadcasts going, so we do need to get everybody's lists and when everybody's playing and see how that works out with everybody who's available to broadcast. It looks like he will decloak with Echo. Let's see where he's gonna go. Most likely he'll he'll end up at the bottom half of the board. He doesn't want to go any closer. So he's gonna decloak right forward. Interesting move. Hmm. It was not what I expected so far at all. So Vassal still doesn't have the the barrel roll to bank for Echo. Soon though. A great program. I suggest all you players that are uh, that are wanting to get into X Wing or are already playing X Wing, give it a try. It'll it'll help out tremendously with your movement, spatial sense, and give you a sense of the game. Uh, of course it it does not replace actually playing with the little miniatures. Those are the best. So three forward and Echo is in a very precarious situation. 
Not sure why he he did that. But we'll see what his decision was. We'll see if he actually collided. We can zoom in a bit. Take a look at the action from a different angle. I think I missed the collision measurement. I don't think he did. Doesn't look like he did. We'll see what his action is. He might he might barrel roll. But he's definitely in range three of dash. So what a risky maneuver. At least he'll be able to shoot first. Very interesting. I'm trying to figure out if Koran will be in range. Of course, the Phantom does not have a target lock action, so you can't sneak in a measuring. The measuring arcs. And we're entering into the 15 minute point here of the game. If you're just joining us, this is our first test broadcast of the Team Covenant tournament, um, online vassal tournament, between Sozin on the left hand side and Luke Kraus on the right. And this is turn two right now and we're already into the, uh, the thick of the action. We'll see how he does with his shootings. So he takes a focus, hoping to land some shots. And we're into turn one of shooting. Turn two, shooting. Koran, not in range, will not be able to shoot him. And of course, Echo will not be able to shoot back. But still, the range of Dash will be intense. Very risky. It looks like a range 3 shot. Close call. Echo on dash. So two evade dice versus four attack uh, three evade dice versus four attack dice. So if you're just joining us, the Imperial player started on this bottom side of the map. The rebel player started separated on this side of the map and they just set up now for range 3 shooting on dash hmm. so we'll talk a bit about dash rendar and corin horn team uh, again, like I said in the earlier, Dash Rendar, with his Outrider title and Heavy Laser Cannon, has a has a blind spot at range one. Um, oh, let's go into shooting. Shoots, spend focus, lands three hits on Dash. Let's see. Dash rolls no. What a huge hit! So at this point, Dash will lose three hull, uh, three shields. Sorry. That was a great first round of shooting. So as you can see. 
I'm able to uh, remove three shields from dash render. And you can also see it on the player's ship. Echo acquires target lock with his fire control system and cloaks up with his advanced cloaking device. It'll be really hard to hit, but still very tricky. See if the Admiral will be able to shoot. At dash, if he wants to shoot at dash, that's range two, which is which is okay. But at the same time, I believe it'll be obstructed. So it'll be a three versus three shot. Or he can range one Koran, but Koran has turtled up with his focus evade. And really Koran is useless this turn anyway. He won't be able to shoot Echo, and he's completely out of arcs. Of the rear admiral. Rolls one crit, and he'll be able to change his focus into a crit. That's rear admiral's ability. Rolls one evade. He'll be able to change his focus to another evade if he wants. Loses one shield instead. Chooses to keep his focus so he can uh, probably use it against the cloaked, the cloaked Echo. Looks like range 3 again. 4 versus 4. Rolls 2 hits. Converts it all to crits. Tricky situation for Echo at this point. 1 evade. He'll be able to survive for one more round. So Echo loses both his shields. And one hull. Really horrible start for Echo. Sitting at one hull. 37 points would be gone right from the map. Could have finished him off with Koran, but he's barely out of range. Koran now has a double tap in range of Echo, but we'll see what happens. Now what Luke wants to do here is, is get Echo at range 1 of Koran, and at the same time stay out of arcs. Sorry, range one of dash. And stay out of arcs of Koran, because he won't be able to shoot him at range one. But the, the rear admiral is going to be flying around now, just pot shotting at least next turn, because these two ships are going to be focused on Echo. And once you take Echo out of the match, it's cleanup at that point, but um, he can survive for a long time and he does deal a lot of damage with the gunner ruthlessness combo and his special ability doesn't need to focus <laughs> going into turn three now echo has a lot of options especially with his two bank uncloak he can end up uncloaked here uncloak here Uncloak back here, or decloak up here. You can even move two forward down here, two forward forward here. He has a lot of options. His his dial will dictate where he'll end up, obviously, after the decloaking. But um, with some smart maneuvering, Echo can 
can survive another round and can even avoid any direct damage from either ships. Again, if you're just joining us, we're entering our 24th minute here, turn 3. Uh, live streaming Sozin versus Lucas 9. Uh, right now we're turn 3, sorry. We started at 9, so there was a little bit of technical difficulties at the beginning. But uh, we're, we're working on those right now. Hopefully by, by our next broadcast we'll, we'll look better and uh, be able to provide a little bit more detail with everything. Not sure what just happened. Maybe a vassal bug. There he is. Key back. Yep, it's a vassal bug. So guys, just trying to figure out the vassal bugs. Again, bear with us. This is our first broadcast. I think so far everything is looking decent. Of course, decent in terms of the broadcast, but... Uh, Unfortunately for Echo, down to one hull after one round of shooting is not not good news whatsoever. Echo's mainstay is to stay out of range and not get hit. And getting hit with a heavy laser cannon on the first turn was not what you want. Just stating the obvious. Luke is going to think hard about where he wants Echo to land. Like we said, he can land, he can be anywhere basically. He can be back here, be up here, in this area. Echo location will help if you download that app. It'll help you out with that. So I'd like to thank the community out there just brought that up, reminded me to thank everybody. Our MNX channel on YouTube has a lot of subscribers and, and hopefully new content will be chugging out. And now that we have this live casting system going on for Vassal Games, I hope we'll be have even have more content for everybody to enjoy and watch.
course, it's not the same as seeing the live miniatures. Entering our 30th minute here of the game. And already echoes down to one hull point. Dash has taken four hits. But he still has plenty of life left to go. And we're good to go. Dash goes four forward. Probably boost into open space to remain at range three. Maybe even barrel roll. See what he does. Of course, right now he has Echo blocked from decloaking into there, into this whole area. So Echo is now limited to decloaking up here, which is still in range, in range for the heavy laser cannon, 360 arc. He boosts one forward, so now Echo has an out. He uncloaks. And one turns, he's in within range one. But now Corian is coming in. Double tap on Echo. Deadly at this point. Let's see where Corian's gonna go. He's stressed, so his ones are green. I think his twos and threes, two and three forward as well. Goes one forward, removes his stress, probably will, yep, focus evade. And get stressed, typical move with the turtling Koran. Of course he would have gained a shield if he had taken any damage. The Admiral boosts, I mean, uh, sharp two. And probably will boost. Nope. Oh. Target locks. I guess they're gonna try to take out Corin. This is gonna be tricky for for the Imperial player for Luke. So like we said, initiative is with the Imperial with the Rebel player. So he will get to shoot first with Koran. But Echo needs to get out of arcs of Koran, so he needs to land here or here. This will be very tricky. Very, very tricky. So right now he's determining whether or not he should decloak. But he will. So right side forward, decloak. One up here. Might be barely in range. Range three. Will depend on his this maneuver here. Could be a two? No. We'll see what he needs to do. Again, guys, make sure you, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube after it's been after it's been updated, uh, uh, uploaded on YouTube, please leave us a comment below. Let us know what we can do to improve this. What uh, if the audio is fine? If any issues with the display, any stuttering? Uh, do you want it bigger? Do you have any comments about the overlay? Get up, get on Team Covenant's site and post post your comments there too. Let us know how we did. We'll be over on Reddit as well, trying to see if uh, if we're able to uh, get more lists and more times for teams to come in, uh, for players to come in and uh, set up a good uh, another broadcast for them.
So Echo moved two forward and Bear rolled as backwards as possible. I think he's out of arcs. Koran has no shot. Which is fantastic for Echo. Hopefully he's out of range of out of range of dash or else that's bad news bears. At least he'll be able to put some hurt on Koran. Unfortunately Koran is turtled up with his focus evades. Oh, what a horrible roll. Just one crit. Two focuses. Will he spend the focus or spend the evade? He'll take a shield damage. Probably planning to uh, regenerate that after. Range 2 with a decimator. With a target lock. Gunner, etc., etc. A lot of shots going off. Sozin is doing a really good job keeping his ships over range 1 from each other. Quite unfortunate. Focus blank hit. Hero player is not rolling well today. Three evade dice. Let's see what Sozin decides to do. Of course, with his ability, he turns one focus into a crit. He can choose not to to activate Gunner, of course. Sozin rolls two evades. Gunner activates. Such a good combination. Hit, hit, blank. Will he spend his target lock? Yep, he will. And he rolls an evade. Oh! He rolled too early. So he's gonna target lock first. Horn, horn, sitting at two hull, two shield. Of course, with a green maneuver next turn, he'll be able to regenerate. That shield. Range three, shot at Echo. Four on four, with heavy laser cannon. Echo is probably dead with a little bit of overkill. Oh, what a heartbreaker if he just had a focus. So with that, Echo is out of the game. Quite unfortunate for our Rebel player, Imperial player.
So now it's all up to the rear admiral. It'll take forever for Dash and Koran to hit him. Since Koran will probably be out, we'll be able to shoot next turn since he will want to regenerate his shield. Plus to go through 12, 4 shields and 12 hull. So this may take a while. We're entering our 40 minutes point here. And we have the Imperial player down 37 points. So he's at 62 at this point. I guess we should up update that. With Echo off the board, that's, you know, a third of his list gone, down to 62 points. Still, the majority of his list is on the board, can do some solid damage. Corrin Horn does a 3 forward and regenerates one of his shields. And focuses. Does not push the limits. He wants to be able to take another maneuver to get him around to get some shots in. A big right turn by Char. So he can boost and get here. Of course, Dash can uh, one forward, one banks to clear his stress and just engine upgrade, barrel roll, have some fun. That didn't look right. So he one banks. To the right. Able to manage to stay out of range of that asteroid, but he'll be shooting Koran through an asteroid. Probably a range two. Three versus four dice. I'm sorry, I completely miss, missed Dash's movements. But next turn he can come back in on the action. Three versus four with a focus as a modifier and target lock. A good amount of people in here watching the game. And a good amount of people on the Twitch stream as well. Thanks for joining us and thanks for the good comments. We had some technical difficulties earlier and I wasn't able to get in and 
and check all my audio levels in on my uh, broadcast schedule. Internet was out for a few hours. Gave me a chance to uh, catch up on some light reading. So he just landed one hit. Focus, focus, blank. He'll take the shield. Of course, he chooses not to spend his target locks because he wants Gunner to activate. But why? Why would why would you want Gunner to activate when you can just regenerate that one hull? Another great thing for with uh, with the rebel, with the with this rebel list, especially with dash, is that uh, you could have had you could have added three debris fields for yourself, and they don't affect dash in any way because uh, he doesn't get the stress for going through them. He's not affected by them, and he can land right on them to be able to shoot, no problem, go through them. Unfortunately, they used uh, all rocks. I'm not sure what what was the the thought process behind that. Asking the players about the rocks. They look better when they turn around, obviously. One bank to clear his stress. And he can just play around this whole area. He can even barrel roll onto this asteroid if he wants. He, his ability allows him to ignore it completely. And then you can boost right off it and be able to shoot. Such a great ability for dash, especially for people who are not familiar with, with exact movement, but um, it opens up the map for you tremendously. And with his engine upgrades, he can be he can be maneuvered anywhere. Sozin is considering his actions at this point. Charno has a has a four forward, so if he banks in, he risks to be at range one and not be able to get a shot on him. Also he can he won't one most likely won't one forward, so it looks like he'll crash onto that asteroid. Koran runs away, he does a three bank, does not regen shields. So we're looking for a 2 2 on Koran. He's probably running away. Koran has not activated his ability yet. And he never really had to, since Echo was dead in two turns. Heavy Laser Cannon really does a number on Echo. Sozin takes a focus on, on Horn. Cherno goes four forward like we expected. And unfortunately, I don't think he'll be able to boost to be range one of dash. 
Not sure why he has a yellow circle there. On his icon. He has to consider his action very well. If he goes one forward, he'll end up here. And if that puts him at range one, that'll be fantastic. And if he one banks, he risks landing on this asteroid on his next turn. The Admiral will boost. One forward. Hoping to be in range one of the dash. Of course, Admiral will shoot first. Corrin has no shot. Oh, heartbreaking. But now that he's this close, he'll be able to keep up with Corrin and Stay at range one of him. Smart move. Still has a lot of hull to eat through if he's going to eat him with his heavy laser cannons. So range two shot. Three on two. I don't know why he's not shooting Koran instead. He's done And it's two hits on dash. Dash loses one shield and one hull. Down to four hull, and I think the Admiral will uh, seeing if ruthlessness will kick in, but I don't think it he is in range one. You can zoom in, take a closer look at the action here. Nope. Close, but no cigar. Two shields, loss off the Admiral. Not a big deal. Such a big ship, it's gonna take a while to get down. And now we're back to dials again. about minute 53 at this point. I think we're at turn 4 or 5. With Echo take, being taken out on turn 2. If you're just joining us, taken out very early in the matchup. Uh, wasn't able to do much. I think he landed maybe 1 or 2 hits on Dash and 1 or 2 hits that, that were regenerated on Koran. Dash Render did quite a number on Echo. Two, two range three heavy laser cannon shots on him, and I think he rolled all hits both times. So uh, on the last attempt, Echo rolled three evades, one focus, but he did not have a focus to convert. Koran has done nothing but absorb a couple of hits and and just regenerate them back. But now Rear Admiral is doing some work on Dash. He, if he predicts his maneuver properly, Dash will be able to
if he does if he if if the rear admiral stays at range one of dash then he'll be able to deal a lot of damage without receiving any Again, for those just joining us, this is our our initial uh, broadcast um, between Sozin and Luke. Ironing out some of the bugs. Making sure that uh, the display is all nice, no lag. No delays. Hopefully next time I have a co-host so we can get some witty banter going. Dash Rendar performs a four forward and one left bank. Not sure if he's going to use his push to limit to um, get even further away. So he'll be able to shoot his heavy laser cannons. Instead he pushes the limit and evades. Because he knows he's going to get shot. Not sure how he can. Nope, he doesn't evade, does he? Focus and boost. That's a boost. That should be a boost. Koran Horn does a two bank. Again, does not regenerate shields. Stays as two and two. And now it's all up to Rear Admiral to be able to catch up to Koran Horn and stay within range one of him so he doesn't get shot at. <coughs> Excuse me. Corrin Horn. Make you focus evade again. Clarifying that it's a boost, not an evade. The YT does not have a, an evade action anyway. Rear Admiral is doing some pretty heavy lifting. Oh, what a beautiful maneuver. That's definitely range one. Won't be able to shoot back. Probably out of range. So now he's left with a, with a strong decision to make, but he chooses to target lock, which is pretty good if you have gunner. That's uh, three times that you'll be able to uh, attempt to land some hits. And with some nice crits, of course, that focus, that focus conversion on the rear admiral, he'll be able to land um, at least one crit if he rolls a focus. So he doesn't need to take the focus action. Hopefully... If Echo was alive, it would have been it would have been an interesting match, but uh, I think this one is a really interesting one as well. So we get uh, two hits and a focus. He'll probably convert. Oh no, he chooses to target lock instead. 
gets a crit. Is he going to convert his focus to a crit? Yeah, he is. Rolls one evade. Lands one hit and two crits. This could be dash out of the game. Let's see what the crit is. Minor explosion. Munitions failure. Rolls a hit for a minor explosion, and he's dead. What a epic turn for the rear admiral. Taking out Dash Rendar in one round of shooting. Not around one round, but uh, in one volley of hits. And now it's a little E Wing versus a huge, huge decimator. Let's give Dash Rendar some more opacity here so he can be up here. So that's 44 points gone from our rebel player. Down to 56. And now comes the fun part. So Koran will turtle up. He will two bank and regain one of his shields back. And looks like the rear admiral does a three bank. Not sure if he'll choose to boost. Yep, he'll choose to boost to stay out of range. No shots this round. And we're back to dials. Sozin knows exactly what he wants to do. Probably will chase. He wants that double tap. Unfortunately the double tap is um, a hindrance for him at this point since he'll shoot twice but the next round he won't be able to shoot at all. Looks like the asteroid was moved. And we're just past our one hour mark with the Imperial player just slightly in the lead in points, using his rear admiral to take out Dash Rendar, but losing his echo really, really earlier. Being told a good move by Sozin would be going through the rocks. That would that would take some epic maneuvering, I think, to stay. Nope, goes one forward. Maybe he wants to see how this will go. But the rear admiral can just come right behind him. If Lucross comes into here... I'll be very impressed if you'll be able to get out. <laughs> One forward to clear stress, and you're probably taking the same group of actions. 
or he might want to avoid pushing the limit so he can open up some more actions for himself next round. Tries to target lock, but is unable to reach, of course, out of range. Sorry guys, just shifting some stuff around on my screen here so I can get a better view. Looks like a 3 bank. And then a, a 1 boost. He's going to try to come behind him. So he's going to try to take the shortcut through the asteroids. And we're back to dials again. This will be really interesting to see if, if the rear admiral is able to get behind Koran. Soza needs needs to needs to get in in front of him, or at least stay behind him. But with such a large ship moving and boosting, that'll be a tough job to do. And considering he still has 14 hull, 14 health to eat through, it's going to be a rough ride for Koran. The best thing is he's shooting first, so if it does come down to to some sort of uh, one hull face off, he has the advantage. But he can still shoot him back, and it's a tie. Gonna like thank you guys for for tuning in on Twitch, and for those of you watching this later on on. YouTube, leave us a comment, let, let us know how we did. Any improvements that we need to do, anything else you would like to see on the map. Uh, I know the borders are a little wonky right now, so we'll need to expand that to a more widescreen 16 by 9 ratio, probably cover, um, give us more area to, to play with, maybe may even make the map a little bigger. Do you guys see the detail well enough in the map? Hopefully the audio is good. It's clear, not too loud. Hopefully with a second broadcaster, all the empty spaces will be nice and uh, nice and filled with some discussion about specific tactics or what you would have done. Definitely at the, at the very first movement of Echo, I would not have moved him within range. I would have moved him down instead of up, and I think that's what made him lose Echo. So the dials are revealed, the two bank. Coming in, Corinhorn trying to stay ahead of the game and not fall behind. If, if, if the rear admiral manages to stay behind Corinne, then Corinne is in trouble. Focus evade, he, turtle, he turtles up, expecting to be shot at next turn, but I think he has pretty good arcs. Let's see what he's going to do here. A good target lock would be nice. Also a boost to help you out next turn. You always want to think three, four, five moves ahead, especially in these situations because it's it's a dance at this point. So he wants to come in closer, which is still good for him, since he gets to move after. He'll be able to go where his enemy was. And Koran 
is stressed, so he needs to take a green maneuver, which is his ones. His forwards are all blocked, of course. But using the asteroids to your advantage as well, if you're the decimator with zero evade dice. He will gain an automatic evade evade action once once he suffers a damage, so So he's keeping it, keeping his focus. Acquires his first target lock of the game through fire control systems. Three dice versus four, return with an evade and a focus. So this is going to be tough for him to land, but with Gunner, um, he's at least going to get two shots. Blank, focus, blank. So he turns it into a crit. Rolls four dice, has a focus. Will he take the hit? Or will he allow a gunner? Take a hit or allow a gunner. He'll be able to regenerate, so he will take the shield. <laughs> to deny Gunner. So he's considering his ability right now, because he knows next turn he might not be able to shoot at all. Might be a good time to use it. So he will use it, and he rolls a crit and two hits. He rolls one evade dice because of the asteroid. <laughs> Suffers two shields and one crit on the admiral. That we'll see what the crit is going to be. Thrust control fire. Checking out what thrust control fire does. Receives a stress. Players are taking a little bit of a break here as we enter an hour and 13 minutes. So right now the Admiral is um, getting an automatic evade every turn. So again, if you're just joining us now, we are Monday Night X-Wing. Of course, this is not Monday night, it's Friday nights, but uh, it is a special occasion as we're 
doing our first ever live stream Team Covenant tournament between Sozin and Luke Cross. It's their first match, it's our first broadcast. Hopefully you're enjoying the show. Hopefully everything looks good on your screen. Hopefully you can hear me well. Vassal is a really good way to, uh, to test out new ships, especially with these unreleased ships that we have here. Dash, Rendar, and his YT, and uh, the Decimator. Both coming up in the next couple of weeks. A uh, couple of months, sorry. Rebel Aces should be on the shelves soon. Uh, of course, we have a copy of Rebel Aces at our MNX headquarters, as well as a Decimator, so... Coming up in the next couple of weeks, we're going to put up a couple more, uh, a couple of more videos, live videos of the Decimator in play, as well as the Rebel Aces. We weren't able to get a YT, unfortunately, so we'll try to cast more Vassal games with YTs. Uh, and just brought to my attention that the Rear Admiral will not get the evade action automatically. He he needs to be able to take the action itself, since it is, an, it is a free action. So, just a rules clarification. Even free actions um, abide by the rules. If, if you're stressed, you can't take an action. So he'll have to clear that stress to be able to get his uh, free evade action. If it's set on the card, a free evade token, then it wouldn't matter if you're stressed or not. But because it said, take a free evade action, then he will. Thanks for the some of our viewers for clarifying that for me. Of course, if I had a co-host, I'll be able to. Uh, they'll be able to to correct me. So feel free to comment on the forum thread to see if uh, if you want to join me with some co-hosting. I have a couple of people. Usually, I have Marcus over in MNX, but he's he was unavailable. It is. Um, this was very short notice, so we came up with the idea on Tuesday, Wednesday, concept, Thursday, we talked about it, and here we are today broadcasting. Hopefully everything looks good, and doesn't. I'm sure, I hope it doesn't look rushed at least, but it will be fine-tuned as we move along. So right now we're in our dolls phase, waiting for... Sozin. He has double tapped, used his ability next last turn, so he will not be able to attack. So a good maneuver for him would be to uh, block. The Admiral or try to run away. Pretty sure he will try to regain his one shield at least that he lost last turn to deny the gunner activation. I think a good addition would be be able to show what the decimator dial looks like, so you guys can kind of have a, a good idea as to what to expect next. So uh, probably for our next broadcast, if we have this much room again between the lists, I'll put down in these black areas display the dials, so maybe you guys can look a look and see if if your predictions were right. See if your movement was better than what uh, what these guys made. Just 
he's trying to take the one forward action to see if he can crash into the uh, the asteroid in front of him and then possibly barrel roll out of the way for his next turn and that way he'll be he'll be able to at least block the rear admiral from taking any of his green maneuvers but um, the rear admiral just needs to go behind Karen and Karen will be in trouble can zoom in a little bit on the action since we're not close to the edges be able to get a better idea as, as to what these players are working with Looks like he's ready, and let's see what his action is. He's going to one forward. He's going to risk it. He's going to risk it. Let's enhance. Oh, looks like he was able to uh, to evade. Even the nose of the ship was able to make it past. He's going to R2D2, regain his health. And then barrel roll, probably into the way of the decimator. Oh, but he barrel rolls out of the arcs. Sorry, not out of the arcs, out of the way. Maybe he's just playing mind games with the decimator. Decimator thinking he would barrel to block him. And now he can focus, evade. Sorry, uh, push the limit, evade. The decimator does a one forward, three forward, sorry, and clears his stress. I think three forward was a bit too far, but I think he was hoping he thought he might be he might be blocked. His next move is clear though. It's obvious that he's gonna go this way and probably boost. I think I think Sozan should have blocked. That way if he was touching, at least collect collision wise, he won't be able to shoot, so he'd be able to uh he'd be able he won't be able to take his shot. And he'll be safe for at least one more round, especially this round since he can't shoot anyway. So we got a four versus three shot here. At least he has one evade. Four hits. Massive. It's not looking good. Loses two shields. can still regen at least one next round. But look at that decimator. Still 14 hull strong. Actually no. What am I talking about? I just forgot to update the hull the hull value on the decimator. <laughs> Luckily for us, the players have been keeping track. 
So as you can see, the decimator has 11 hull, uh, and it has to take its uh, free evade action. So R2D2 regenerates the shield for Sozin on Koran Horn, so he's back to two hull and two shield. Let's go ahead and uh, remove one hull from the decimator. <coughs> and he'll be able to get his free evade action. So he pushes the limit, focus evades, turtling up again. His shooting has been opened up again, but uh, obviously he's going to be out of arcs. With a two sharp turn and a boost, yeah, he'll be able to um, be in range. Oh, the asteroid will be in the way. That'll be tough. Range 3 through an asteroid. 3 versus 5. The rolling is starting. Let's see if he rolls well again. The dice have been helping him out. Now, after failing him at the beginning of the game. Hit, focus, hit. So he can change that focus into a critical hit. Not sure why he didn't change that focus into a critical hit. So with that, the um, the E wing takes one takes one shield damage. I'm sure he was he was hoping to avoid uh, to to activate Gunner again, I assume, for by not changing that crit. But he was able to be foiled again. The Ewing down to one shield, two hull. Rear Admiral still solid eleven hull. Two bank will regenerate one more of his shields. And they're just playing Ring Around the Rosie at this point. See what the Rear Admiral will do. He will most likely 3 and then boost. <coughs> Let's 
excuse me. Contemplating his actions at this point, does he want to stress himself up with a push to limit? Maybe just take an evade? Would not be a good idea at this point to stress. You want to leave options for yourself. But he's going to just focus. At the hour and 30 minute mark, we see that it's uh, 56 62. The Rebel player took a very early lead by killing off Echo on turn 3 after two heavy laser cannon hits. But uh, Rear Admiral did a lot of cleanup work on Dash by staying in range 1, avoiding the heavy laser cannon, and finishing him off at close range. And now we're just playing Chase with Rear Admiral chasing Core and Horn. He keeps landing one hits at a time, and he keeps regenerating his shields. But now he's range 2. Hopefully he lands some more hits to uh, try to keep up with the R2-D2 unit. The troll R2-D2. So I got a little bug. Try to get the ship back. There it is. Range 2, 3 versus 3, with a target lock and focus. Let's see what he's going to do. Turns 1 into a crit. Two evades. Will he choose to take the one hit? To avoid gunnering, he loses one shield. Now we're back to dials again, and we're back just starting over again with the two, two hull, one shield, and he'll be able to regenerate one more hull, one more shield with his R2 D2 unit, but that means he's stuck taking a green maneuver at this point. Which helps helps the rear admiral. The rear admiral is going to try to uh, bank around this asteroid. Maybe even just go one forward and boost. Or if he banks around it, he'll be able to at least um, take some more actions instead of the boost. Engine upgrade is a great modification. One of the most underrated ones, but uh, I think it's it's really strong especially in this situation, as you can see. You can keep up with that small ship. Unfortunately for Koran, he does not have engine upgrades, so he's he's limited by his dial in terms of covering distance. So, But now that the rear admiral is, is behind him, it'll be tough. Tough, tough for, for Koran to, to get any shots in. Rear Admiral is set. Just being told that Sozin needs, he needs the K-turn. Because if he doesn't K-turn, he'll never win. He'll just, 
he'll probably lose if he doesn't get it get shots in. A key turn right now would be devastating, I think, since he'll have no action, but the rear admiral will be able to to close in. I think he should have K-turned here. <laughs> if you're tuning in, um, this, this will get uploaded onto YouTube for your review later on. But at the same time, if, uh, if you guys want to stay up later, I'm going to try to get uh, both of these guys on on the channel to discuss what just happened and also to uh, talk about uh, what uh, what they have in store for us for the next um, couple of games maybe we'll follow one or both players uh, make this a nice series it is pushing on one hour and forty minutes right now with uh, the rear admiral chasing Corin Horn Cornhorn has has no chance unless he turns around. He has to, or he can, or he can, um, as some other players in the chat here with us are saying, he could uh, go into the asteroid field and, and try to lose him that way. But it looks like he moves three forwards and R two D twos. and performs a one left bank which I believe is an illegal maneuver not sure how he one left banked I don't think he has a boost Not sure if anybody caught that. I could be wrong. Could have the list wrong. Could double check. I don't think he could have boosted, but we'll see. He's back up to two and two. Uh, yeah, I don't think he could have boosted. I think it's an illegal maneuver. I want to see if, if Lucas will catch that. Or the TO would. Looks like Lucas disconnected. He's waiting to uh, to reestablish connection. We'll see. This is interesting. Always interesting to watch.
Still, that beast of a ship was able to get into range. Range 2. Unfortunately, if Sozin was not, did not boost, he'd, I think he'd be in range 1. This is a good opportunity for Sozin to be able to um, avoid. Oh, looks like Lucas caught caught the boost error, so they're going to go back and unboost. No harm, no foul. But now that he knows his action it's kind of uh, it's expected that he would just you know push the limit focus evade again if you're just joining us this will be up on YouTube so you'll be able to catch on the early action some early action happened with uh, with echo being taken out and then Dash Render being cleaned up by Rear Admiral. So, yeah, he, he focus evaded. That'll get him into range 1. And hopefully do some, maybe blow up that R2 unit to, uh, to get this game going again. <coughs> so the Admiral has target lock on him, which is good. And he's able to change his focus results to crits. And now we'll just take a look at what the dice has to say. Four versus three. Hit, hit, focus. So he's able to change that focus to a crit. Or spend his target lock to, uh, to try to get... Yep, yeah, he did change it to a crit. Blank, blank, focus. So... He'll be able to at least avoid two of them. It is a V token and his focus token. So he just takes one shield. Again. Looks like we're pushing a, a two hour broadcast now. Upload looks pretty good. Frames looks pretty good. With the engine upgrades on the uh, on the decimator, it's going to be really hard for Mr. Horn to outrun outrun him. He can try to stall and bump. Maybe that'll help, like going a one forward and hoping to bump. Engine upgrades is like I, like I was saying earlier is a great upgrade for the cost. And when you're in the lead and in a good position, it's it really pays for itself. Unfortunately, if you're behind and you're trying, you can't run away, even with engine upgrades, then it's just it's a wasted action because you would rather either focus or evade. So at this point we're figuring that E-Wing will 
take a green maneuver to regenerate that one shield it just lost. It is stressed, so it does need to get rid of that stress. And the Admiral is just going to gonna chase and boost to get into range 1 again and hopefully get uh, a good roll off. The Ewing has been doing a pretty good job at, at uh, negating the gunner. Ruthlessness, of course, is now a, a pointless set of points. Pointless set of points. <laughs> a pointless upgrade, since it does it damages nobody else. So he regains his shield with the one forward. It's a green maneuver. In focus of eight would push the limit to turtle up. But now the Admiral does not need to boost or anything, so he's free to be able to take a focus to solidify his his lead and get some dice modifications going. Let's see how the rolls go this turn. Four versus three again. He will target lock. Gets one more hit off. And he evades all three. Nope, he chooses to take one shield again to deny Gunner. And as expected, he's going to green maneuver next turn to get rid of his stress and regain that one shield back. I know it might feel kind of tedious at this point for everybody watching, but you play enough games and you know that your player will make a mistake, your opponent will make a mistake and you can capitalize on that mistake, so you should never give up. But this is also why they have time limits on certain games. And at this point we're running into 150, uh, an hour and 50 minutes, usually games are about 75 minutes. But uh, these guys did not set a time limit, and we're having some good times with this cat and mouse game. Remember, the rear admiral still has 11 hull and a free evade token every turn. So Koran is going to have to MVP this, this to turn this around. 56 against 62 is a... I think it would count as a modified win. <laughs> 